what is the meaning of life? That is, why are you alive? Why am I alive? That's the subject we're discussing on this program each day. And uh, we have come a long way since we started some six or seven months ago. And so if you need some of the intellectual undergirding that those introductory talks provide, I would encourage you to write for those cassettes so that you can have the same kind of intellectual basis as we have gradually formed over the months. However, I have to jump in where we are in the discussion. And what we've said is that the meaning of life is connected with the creator who made us. That there is a personal creator, a personal intellect behind the universe. And he made us so that we would be his friends, so that we would get to know him, and so that we would begin to understand him and to begin to have a love relationship with him. And that's why he created us. And that's why he created us like himself. We referred to the early words of the Bible in the Old Testament that probably most of us remember having heard read in assembly at school or at some time or other in our lives. It's that verse you remember, it's Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. And we said that he obviously turned round, if one can imagine God turning round, and speaking to his son, his son Jesus, who of course existed with him in timeless eternity before the creation. And he said, son, let us make man in our image. And he decided to make us in his image because he wanted us to be his friends, to enjoy him, to be his children to have a natural interacting relationship with him that was personal. And of course we mentioned that the only kinds of people that you can have real friendship with are people that have the same capabilities as yourself. You know that. You enjoy yourself most with people who have the same kinds of interests as you and most of all who have the same capabilities as you and capacities. It's that uh, ability to discuss and to converse and to analyze, to discuss topical events and to discuss aesthetics and to talk about literature and poetry and science and topical events, to talk about each other and to talk about life and to reflect on ourselves that makes part of what friendship is about. And that's why the Creator made us in his own image. He actually made you to be his friend. Now, I know that just bewilders you, and you think that's ridiculous, and who are you to be the friend of God? But that's actually why he made us. He didn't make us to be playthings or to be toys. He didn't make us to be uh, pawns in some huge cosmic game that he plays. He made us because he really loves us and wants us to know him and to understand him. And that's why he made us in his image. Now, in his image, of course, means several things. First of all, it means making us with his capacities, with his capabilities. And uh, that's where we begin, probably, to touch parts of the meaning of life that you may well have been ignorant of. There is a, a verse in the second chapter of Genesis that gives some kind of metaphorical indication of the makeup of the personality that God has given us. And of course, he explained it in childlike terms because mankind at that point in creation was in his childhood. Uh, perhaps God would have explained it in much more philosophical terms to us today. But in those days, uh, mankind was in his primitive stages, and uh, God explained the thing to mankind uh, in those uh, terms. And uh, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 
7, you read this. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground. He took some dust, Hebrew word for dust is afar, from the ground, and the ground is Adama. And, of course, you can see how that Hebrew word Adama becomes Adam. He took some dust and he formed a body. And, of course, you and I know that bit very well because we've all been to funerals and we've been to gravesides. And we don't find well that after several months, uh, when our casket has been eaten through by worms, eventually we discover that uh, there is dust uh, in the bottom of the casket. After centuries, there's probably nothing but dust because the body just deteriorates into dust because it is made from dust. And you and I know that. If you've seen your dad or your mum after they've died, you know you can look at them and uh, it isn't them. You know it isn't them. It's their features. It looks like them, but you know fine well it's just a physical shell. They no longer are there. You have a sense of that. You can almost push their forehead as they lie in the coffin and think, that used to be my dad, but it isn't any longer. It's just a piece of physical flesh that will soon be dust. Because God made us out of the dust. And in a sense, the body is the least lasting, the most temporary part of us. The verse goes on and it says, Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And, uh, of course, breathing into his nostrils is God's way of saying that he breathed into us his own life. The Hebrew word for breath is ruach, and it also means wind. And, of course, wind is something that you remember Jesus referred to as a, a symbol of the Spirit. Uh, the wind blows where it lists, and no man knows uh, where it uh, goes to and whence it comes from. So is the spirit. And uh, ruach means the breath of God or the spirit of God. And if you say, oh, well, now what's the spirit of God? The nearest uh, you can come to it in simple terms is when you talk about uh, the great spirit that Churchill had. He, what a spirit he had. It's his very essence. It's the essence of the man's character. It's the very heart of the man. It's what he really is deep down. It's his very nature and character. It's his own very self. If you take away all that is accretions and all that are additions and all that has accumulated over the years, the very heart of the man is his spirit. And God breathed into us, he put into us his own heart and his own nature, his own attitude to things, his own spirit, his own attitude. And then the verse goes on and says, and man became a living being. And that's what we call the Revised Standard Version translation. But the old King James Version is probably the best because it says, and man became a living soul. And the Hebrew word for nephesh is uh, for soul is nephesh. And uh, it's interesting, uh, the Greek word for soul is suke. And that, of course, becomes through the Anglo Saxon changes, world of vowel changes, it becomes psyche, P S Y C H E. And it means that God made our bodies and then breathed into our bodies his own very essence, the essence of his own character the thing that gives him life. And the two, as it were, mixed together, much like, I suppose, instant coffee and water. And the third essence that resulted was the soul, the psychological part of us. And so one of the necessary things we have to do is, in order to understand what the meaning of life is about, is to see that the psychological part of us is a separate part of us from this area called the spirit, which is the very essence of God. And that, again, is separate from the body. 
And so uh, we are made in the image of God in that we exist on three different levels. Let's continue a little more with this tomorrow, and I think you'll begin to understand your own self better.